Recording right here? Yeah, it's recording. All right, yeah, we, we're catching audio right here, so it's not the best audio, but we're good to go. Awesome. We're going to go into section five of helping the um, care leader. I hope y'all are realizing, like, this is this system of doing things, it's super simple. What Pastor Joe went over with the um, care acronym, the contacting, um, being available, reaching out, and exemplifying Christian lifestyle. Like, that's the core, right? That is the simplicity of this system. And so from here on out, once you get that and understand that, like, literally, do I have the ability to contact somebody? Yeah. Can I make myself available? Well, to do ministry, you gotta make yourself available, period. Right? Can I reach out? And then you're here because uh, Pastor Ron also believes, and, and Pastor Leo believe that you can exemplify a Christian lifestyle. So literally, these five areas, that, like, that is the core of what you do. And so everything else is to support that, right? And so going over the uh, developing of the care leader. Um, we're going to get into some of the weeds here. Um, just starting out, says throughout Scripture, we find that God takes the initiative to call people into His service. And so, um, I believe that you are here uh, not just in investigation, but you're here because um, just as God called Moses in Exodus, just as God called Samuel in First Samuel. Just as Jesus called the disciples in Matthew 4, I believe that you're here because the Lord has called you to this particular ministry. I was telling Pastor Sam, I was telling Pastor Joe this last night, people that show up to a training like this, um, either it's in your heart or it's not, right? So you're here because there's a desire in you to care for the body of Christ. There's a desire in you to partner with your pastors to care for the people that God has entrusted them on this side of eternity, right? And so the call has gone forward for you just as it did for Moses, just as it did for Samuel, just as it did for the disciples. So today God calls us through the Holy Spirit and too many people too often think they are neither worthy nor competent. Catch this. And Pastor Sam, I want you, to, and you know this, people think that they're neither worthy nor competent to minister to others, and actually none is worthy. The Holy Spirit gives specific gifts to every believer. He qualifies the call instead. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 through 6, now that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, um, for our competence uh, comes from God. He has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant, amen, not of the letter, but of the spirit. The one of the, we've been doing this for about a year and a half. One of the things that I have learned quickly is that people don't think that they're worthy. People don't think that they can do this. People look at their pastors and the leaders and somehow there's this, there's this pedestal of, that they, that they place pastors and leaders on, that we got to remove that thing. Because what happens is, you will identify, or you see people in the body, that you say, man, they would make a great care leader. Oh, they would make a great care shepherd. And they won't come sign up for the training. They won't even talk about why. Because they feel that they're not worthy to do something like this, right? We place a clarion call to our congregation 
congregation to come to the training and come to this and that and the other. And we had people come and then after that, give out the applications. I'm expecting like a hundred applications because I believe that there's a hundred people in our church that can be care pastors or care leaders or care shepherds. And we get a quarter of that. I'm like, this doesn't make sense. So we get that quarter of people signed up and, 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 and they're running and, and blowing and going. And I remember we made it through the first year and um, I kept saying to myself, okay, what I did last year, you know, whether it's a video announcement, getting on stage and talking about it, it won't cut it. Why? Because people don't think they're worthy. So they don't think they're worthy. They're not answering to a video announcement. They're not answering to somebody getting on stage talking about it. They are going to respond to a hand on the shoulder. Hey, brother. Hey, sister. I think that you would be a phenomenal care pastor or a care leader or care shepherd. Me. And I'm thinking, yeah, you. Why not? Are you kidding me? Like, I'm shocked that you're shocked that you don't think that you can do this. And if there's any doubt in this room that you can, or can, or can't, I want to tell you that you can. That it's only by the grace and the mercy of God that any of us do what we do, right? It's through the understanding of who we are without Christ that, man, I cannot help but to do the things that I do for the body, right? And so that's the encounter, people not thinking that they're worthy to do something so important for the body. Two remarkably conspicuous gifts almost certainly indicate a call to the ministry of caring. Number one, mercy, an inner feeling of compassion, come on, sympathy for, empathy with, a desire to help another. Many people, most people have this, a gift of mercy, yet many feel unworthy. But having a gift of mercy, number two, encouragement, to be able to inspire with confidence, courage, and hope. We all should be able to give some hope. We found hope in Christ. Or the hope in Christ, is, the, the hope that Christ provides found us. Hope in bold and stimulate our help. To be able to exhort, comfort, and encourage. Here's a creed. Every believer saved, delivered. I like this. Every believer saved, delivered, and called by God is to enter into the work of ministry. Every believer saved, delivered, and called by God to enter into the work of the ministry, willing to be equipped by the fivefold ministers and energized by the Holy Spirit. So many people who want to be involved in ministry are not because they don't know how to become involved and they are afraid of failure. Now many times the how to become involved I'm learning that people just don't listen well because your pastors are probably constantly talking about vision, how to on ramp, how to do this, and how to do this. So sometimes people just don't listen well. So we just have to say things a thousand times. But I think even more than the how is that people are afraid of failure, rejection, right? People are afraid of that. Uh, the next page, page 22, they have never received training. That won't be the case here um, because uh, we encourage ongoing training, right? So that won't be the case. So we're going to take away every excuse, every excuse. Um, they have never felt included in this ministry. They're going to be included, so that should break that barrier. And then lastly, they assume they don't qualify for the ministry. Father, we break that in the name of Jesus. That unworthy feeling, that lack of I qualify. Father, we break that spirit in the name of Jesus, God. And Lord, may your people, Lord, may the wind of your spirit be blown within every person, Lord God, in church on a mission, Lord God, to know that it is only by the grace and mercy of God that qualifies us all from uh, the lead pastors on, Lord God. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, for blowing that wind of your spirit 
and to the people here. Caring for one another. Many believers possess attributes already that can bring them readily into a caring relationship. Passionate understanding, personal warmth, genuineness, which is integrity and uprightness, a caring attitude, willingness to listen, that is key in care ministry. You need to be a professional listener. More than what you say, you might have a, a bunch to say, but listening is more important, right? There is a time to speak, there is more time to listen. If you spend more time listening, you not only hear them, but you'll hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying and how to respond. But listen to their words and what they're saying and not think about how you're going to respond while they're talking so that you can stay engaged in the moment uh, with that individual. Willingness to listen, availability, availability, and a readiness to encourage others. These uh, traits demonstrate the proper requirements for providing pastoral care and are neither limited or exclusive to the professionals, only, that sounds weird, professionals, only nor acquired through some specific degree program. These gifts are from God, praise God. We bestow them on believers and credentialed pastors alike. We can identify and nurture the gifts into a powerful caring skill. So eight qualities of the care ministry concept. Now although certain people might find uh, providing congregational care easier than others, and that's real, some people it just flows. It flows e easier than others. But we all have uh, the desire. I can have a desire. I, I, I once had a desire to play professional basketball, right? <laughs> to play for whatever that's for. We all have a desire. But for some, right, it comes a bit easier than others, even though you got to work no matter what. Although certain people might find providing congregational care easier than others, everyone has the spiritual gifts necessary and the following essential traits will find it most rewarding and fulfilling. Number one, a personal interest in and a love for people. A love for people. A personal interest. Number two, willingness to assume the responsibility of caring. This is so important. Like, taking this on as a responsible, like I am the, 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 the group of people that are assigned to you are now your responsibility to reach out to, follow up with, to check in on. And so it's taking that responsibility. Ready, number three, readiness to journey into the unknown and to reach their goal. Number four, understanding the goals and vision of the local church. This is super important because this ministry uh, helps, pushes, and, and partners with, with the vision. Number five, be steadfast, loyal, and committed. Number six, willingness to receive and continue with training. Training is ongoing, ongoing, ongoing. We get better with training. Number seven, prepare to sacrifice personal time. Now, I will say this. Don't let this be a hang-up because this ministry doesn't take a bunch of your time. Um, and, it, and it depends because we have some care leaders that are like other world also. Like, they're doing things above and beyond actually what we, what is required of them, right? But I know that this ministry doesn't take a bunch of time because, and I, we'll get to it, this is really, like, the contact, it's literally at minimum once a month. So if you have five families in your group, you could really spend um, one day focus on one family. Second day, focus on a second family. You know, like, and get the whole month, right? So it doesn't take a bunch of your time. And to, um, it, like, oftentimes people think in extremes. So I probably can count on a hand, and maybe a half, 
of the almost two years that we've been doing this ministry and the extreme things that have taken place, like the one with the hospital and things like, it doesn't happen all the time. Now, y'all ain't doing it. I don't know. It might be different. You know, like, <laughs> it might be different. But, like, oftentimes people think, oh, man, like, the extreme things, like, somebody, mama got hit by a car in the hospital or what, it, like, the extreme things that take place are a lot less than what is on people's minds. So, prepare to sacrifice personal time. Number eight, the ability to be a team player and share in joint efforts. Simply loving people is the essential requirement. This is it right here. Simply loving people is the essential requirement. When you love them, you will be able to care for them. So the benefits of obeying God's call, none of us wishes to do the work of Christ uh, with remit, remit, remuneration. I don't even know that word. Remuneration. remuneration. Pay. 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 That's the easier way to say it. We do it for the love of the kingdom. Of course, there are benefits that come as a result of our obedience, spiritual growth, the joy of developing friendships. We were just talking about that. As well as um, ever deepening relationships. Speaking of those relationships, people, and it's not for every, you know, it doesn't happen all the time, but we have people that have, you know, through the ministry, have just taken interest in one another. So they're like hanging out, going camping together, like all kind of stuff. And you have some people, they just, they call, the person receives the call, they get prayer, like that's it. So some relationships blossom into something that's awesome. Some, they stay real surface, but some, the important thing is that somebody is there for that family. And in a sense of fulfillment, which comes from using the gifts of, uh, the gifts of significant ministry, the realization that the caring person is cared, uh, is cared for in the act of caring, and deferred benefit of receiving an eternal crown of glory, 1 Peter 5 and 4. So commitment to the call. Personal commitment. There are leaders in particular seven personal commitments each. I'm sorry. There are in particular seven personal commitments each care leader has to make. Number one, committing to the care concept. Contact. Being available, reaching out, exemplifying a Christian lifestyle. We're committing to that. Greater than committing to that, I probably would switch one and two. Committing your life to Jesus. Committing your life to Jesus will allow you to do everything else. It all flows out of that. Number three, committing of your time and energy. Number four, committing dedication to the ministry. Five, committing to ongoing training. Six, committing to accountability. Um, and it says, yes, there are reports to be filled out. I'm not sure how, no, no, you're using no bird. I'm not gonna get started on no bird, but I might get started on no bird. Like, it's super important. Like, the most important thing is that you're contacting your family, the, your, the, the families that are assigned. After that, just my personal opinion, like I think that when you report in no bird, it's like if, if it's like I'm not gonna say one B, we'll go a solid two. But it's important because then Pastor Ryan and Pastor Leah know that people are being cared for because they can see that, right? Because that's what we're that's the point of all of this is that people are being reached, people are being prayed for, and so if we don't report it, then nobody knows. Like I saw so as a hospice chaplain, what I don't report never happened, all right? So anybody work in a medical field or anything that, where you have to document, you know that if you don't document, it never happened, all right? So you know it happened, your pastors need to know that it happened, right? Because you are representing them. You are representing uh, the church, right? You are representing Christ and they have uh, sent you out to, to do such a ministry. They need to know that you're doing it. 
right? Not to lord over you and see, and let me check and see what's happening. No, not in that spirit, but in a spirit of we want to make sure that everybody is being reached out to. Everybody is being loved. So um, the reporting system is really important. So, thank you. Commit it to the local church and submit to its leadership. Once a care leader makes these commitments, they become the standard, I like that, the standard by which all care leaders live to serve in their ministries. The degree of uh, fulfilling the commitment depends on an inner sense of God's calling. I believe that's why you're here, an inner sense of God's calling. The closeness of your walk with Christ, your walk with Christ, I believe that's why you're here as well. The extent to which you develop your gift, the priorities in time and gift usage, and your progress in spiritual growth. Did I go too fast? Did y'all get that? Okay. Number two, tenure commitment. The care ministry. This is super important as well because the care ministry is not a life sentence. As long as you're a part of Church on a Mission does not mean that you have to be a care leader for the, your duration of a part of this church. It is a care ministry network request that care leaders make an initial 12 month commitment. So it's a, a year commitment. This tenure allows sufficient time for them to adjust to the ministry as well as to assess uh, their ministry fit. This is super important. You found out a lot in a year, right? Pastor Sam, you go <laughs> very quickly. You're gonna like it's super like the the one year commitment is good on both fronts for the care leaders and for the leadership because from the leadership side of things, you're gonna have to have people that are going to go through training and want to be a part of this because their heart is good. Like they just, I want to help. I want to help push the ministry forward. I want to do, you know. And there's a difference between that and there's a difference between people like, I'm called to this ministry. You know, and usually it weeds itself out. But that year, you'll notice in a year, like, they'll know, oh, I thank the Lord, but I'm that year's done. I thank the Lord. And you'll be like, thank the Lord. Like, I believe that we got a bunch of ministries that you're going to, that, that you're called. You make one of them you're called to. It might not be this one. Right? But that year is good for, for those who have committed to the year and for the leadership team. And um, uh, and so, yeah, it's a, it's a one-year commitment. And we've had some people, whether through health issues, had to step down, personal issues, I always tell um, our care leaders, just come talk to me. Just come let me know. We can talk. We can work through anything. Even fits that aren't good as far as uh, like the care leader and their group members, right? Because you're doing your best to pair, you know? And, you know, some, I mean, we haven't had to, we, I probably can count on one hand how many rearrangements we've had to make. But I try to, we do our best to, make good fits, you know, whether it be um, young family with, you know, middle-aged care leaders or widows with widows and things like that. But um, all that plays into a part, but you'll have those little things that, you know, sometimes shorten the commitment, health issues, family issues, and things like that. So, but it's ultimately a 12-month commitment. Number three, character commitment. In ministry, we tend to view the goal as the goal, but in God's economy, the process is the goal. It's not about what we're doing at all. It's about who we're becoming in the process, Mark Madison. Character development is an ongoing pro progression, and often the challenge of life we face uh, hone and shape. What we are is far more important than what we do, amen. Being precedes doing. We develop care leaders on two levels. Number one, who they are, and two, what they do. So to be sure, it is easier to learn what to do than it is to allow the Holy Spirit to shape us in what we should 
B. Let's go to the next page. So in the little box up top, we should be committed to become the people of God before we do the work of God. That's so good. We become the people of God before we do the work of God. Loving and caring have to be a lifestyle. That's good. Loving and caring has to be a lifestyle, not simply the activities of a program. We uh, the, uh, uh, activities of a program we do sometimes. It's a lifestyle, and just like Pastor Joe talked about in the last session, this lifestyle. This is like even for us to import. We are. It's like a, a cruise ship turning against the tide because you turn. You're changing culture, not just fight. You know changing your church, church's culture, but it's like the world's culture becomes ingrained in people, right? And you have to, all of that is shifting, how they know how to connect with people or not connect with, I'm private, I don't want people in my business, I don't want to say this, it's ingrained in everybody at various levels, right? So it's a change of culture and caring, loving and caring, being a lifestyle, I'm telling you, it's a change of culture for people. Because people don't know how to receive care. Because people are, are, have had to fight and defend for themselves for so long that somebody comes in that's not family, that's not blood. And then people have issues with their own family <laughs> and blood. So why would I trust you from outside, you know what I'm saying? So, it's shifting a culture within not only your church, within people, right? It's turning a ship. But loving and caring has to be a lifestyle. Matthew's chapter 7, 17 through 18. A good tree produces uh, good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. Good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, Matthew 20 and 28. Choose to serve is far more important than desiring to be served. In 1 Timothy 3, where we find the qualifications for serving in ministry, Paul penned or implied, be more than 20 times. People understand the teachings they see in the life of the one who is teaching. People who will do, people will do best that which they can see exemplified in the life of the one who is with them. So four basic qualifications of a care leader. Number one, must be born again with the evidence of the fruit of repentance. Be a member of the local congregation. Be willing to submit to leadership and authority. Live an exemplary life. Have a healthy marriage and family when these are applicable. Have the ability to be loved with skin on. We like saying that. <clears throat> Being loved with skin on. That's like bringing love alive, right? Be faithful and loyal. And not be overloaded with other commitments and responsibilities to other ministries. A lot of people have uh, a heart to do a lot of things. Uh, but we want to make sure that people aren't overloaded with things, right? So that this ministry doesn't become a burden. It's another thing. Oh, I got to, it's because they're loaded down with other things. Number five, a brief overview for care pastors, uh, care leaders. As a care leader, you should declare your willingness to serve as a care leader. Complete an application form, which you'll get one. Attend a care leaders fellowship meeting and be willing to receive ongoing training. Follow through with your, with your ministry commitments. Make yourself available, touchable, approachable, and reachable to your group. And adhere to the care construct. Our first year, I really dro drove this home. Uh, contact your people regularly, available to your people, reach out in prayer on behalf of each household, and exemplify a Christian lifestyle. 
diligent, diligently fulfill the five points of contact. Complete your feedback reports and or other established means of feedback. Be willing and available to meet with your care shepherd regularly. Attend Care Ministry Network Fellowship events and summits faithfully and provide and also share the testimonies of ministry accomplishments. One of the things that we have in uh, our note verb is our testimonies. I'm trying to get people to use that more often. We always use the prayer request, but man, people need to know that this stuff is happening, you know? Awesome. That's the end of five.